show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. You are your greatest asset. It's time you started investing in that. Visit betterhelp.com super and take care of you. Hey, brother. Guys, this past weekend, Turning Red dropped on Disney+, Plus, which means as ever, we get to add to the ever-expanding Pixar theater. The Pixar theory, in case you are somehow unfamiliar with this particular idea and still clicked on this video, is the idea that all of the Pixar movies exist on one giant timeline, one continuous universe. It all starts with the asteroid missing Earth in The Good Dinosaur, which first shows us other occupants of the planet can exhibit human-like intelligence. And it goes on to show the rise and fall of humans, machines, and animals over millions of years, finally ending with Monsters, Inc or brave, depending on how you look at it. Or, or maybe after this video ends with turning red. Because yeah, turning red tackles the big players inside of the Pixar theory. We're talking Boo, we're talking the witch, we're talking Silly. Let's go! The Pixar theory, the Pixar theory, we're finally going to see it clearly. The Pixar theory. Guys, before we dive on in, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Here's the thing, a lot of us would drop anything to go and help somebody that we love if they were in need. Which is kind of interesting when you consider our own mental health. Like, how often are you willing to help yourself the same way that you're willing to help others? Self-care is so important and it is just crucial to invest in yourself. Personally, I do that through a variety of different avenues. I try to exercise and eat healthy, but the other thing that I do on a very regular basis is go to therapy. And with that said, this month BetterHelp wants to remind you of the most important relationship that you have in life, which is your relationship with yourself. And for me, I don't have a better way to do that than I do through therapy. It can have such a positive impact on your life and give you a better glimpse into who you are. For me personally, one of my big discoveries was that I often felt like I was being taken advantage of, but what I learned in my therapy sessions is that I am a classic people pleaser. And BetterHelp is online therapy that offers it all, whether you're looking for video, phone, or even live chat therapy sessions. And that last one can be huge for someone who maybe doesn't want to see someone on the other end of the camera. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with your therapist in just 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have already started using BetterHelp Online Therapy. Super Carl and Brothers viewers get 10% off your first month when you head on over to betterhelp.com slash super. That is B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash super for 10% off your first month. Link is in the description down below. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw the trailers for Turning Red, I really thought that this addition to the Pixar theory was gonna have a lot more to do with how humans eventually evolved into the monsters. Because, you know, after all, what we were seeing is a little girl transforming into a giant hairy monster. The quick Cliff Notes explanation here is that the humans who return to Earth from space aboard the Axiom are the ones who ultimately eventually evolved or morphed or mutated into the monsters that we know in Monsters, Inc. But boy, oh boy, do I have to tell you that Turning Turning Red took a turn that I did not expect, but ultimately still kind of brings us to the same destination, just not how I thought we would get there. Turning Red tells the story of a young Mei Lin Lee, who is a 13 year old girl living in Toronto, Canada, who is about to go through quite the alarming change into womanhood. Did the red peony bloom? No! And no, not, not that one, but, well maybe not, not that one, but that's not the one that we're talking about for today's video. Instead, it turns out the women of her family have been passed down from generation to generation the same gift, which is the ability to harness their emotions to turn into a powerful giant red panda. A sentence I never expected I would say, but I'm glad I have the opportunity to do so. But I do kind of need to say gift in maybe air quotes, because when the gift was first imbued to the family, it was during ancient war times where the family's ancient matriarch, Soon Li, used the power to transform into this powerful red panda in order to protect her family and town. However, in modern times in Toronto, Canada, it seems to be the case that the family regards this particular gift as a highly respected and regarded inconvenience. Because fortunately for them, there happens to be a ritual that you can undergo that allows you to trap that panda spirit in some kind of a token. And after doing so, the members of this family are able to live a 
typical human life. And the ritual in question to trap this panda spirit involves waiting for the next red moon or lunar eclipse, and then drawing a circle around the person in question and singing from the heart. This allows the person inside of the circle to go into a spirit realm of sorts where they can pass through a mirror, which essentially separates them from the panda spirit, which then one of the members around the circle is able to trap inside of a talisman. This is typically going to be a piece of jewelry of some kind, although a Tamagotchi will work in a pinch. And let me just say, one of the things I really liked about this though is the inclusion of just simply sing from the heart. And that means it's not a specific chant you need to do, just simply singing from the heart, which is great because it's very consistent with how magic works inside of the Pixar theory already. The movie Onward establishes these rules very well, where we learn that in order to cast a spell, Ian needs to speak with his heart's fire. For any spell to work, you have to speak from your heart's fire. Which, by the way, guys, talk about challenges, figuring out how Onward fit into the old PT, which is short, of course, for Pixar theory, but now that I've explained it, it's much longer. It was tough, but it's actually really cool how it worked out because remember how we said before that the members of the Axiom that returned to Earth are the ones that ultimately evolved into the Monsters from Monsters, Inc.? Well, as far as we know, only one of those ships actually returned to Earth, which means the rest of the ships went somewhere. And the planet that we see in Onward is absolutely not Earth, notably because it has two moons, which is exactly where one of the other Axioms crash landed and kind of turned into looking like a mountain. Or the full explanation, just click the but that's not today's point. Back to turning red. What I found particularly interesting about the panda transformation is how it all began. According to Ming, Mei Lin's mom, the gods themselves bestowed Sun Li with this power. And I have to tell you guys that when I first heard this explanation, I kind of needed to take a deep breath because we are pretty deep inside of the Pixar verse at this point, And this is the first time we've ever needed to consider a deity or godlike power as an explanation for anything. Because if that's something we need to consider, then it suddenly reframes everything and kind of becomes a bit of an elephant in the room. Well, I guess in this case, Panda Ao. But here's the thing. I think that Ming's story is just slightly inaccurate, kind of, depending on your you know perspective and relationship with magic. I mean, because yes, they obviously actually do turn into red pandas, but the story itself, I think is more of the folklore, the myth, the story that's been passed down from generation to generation version of it. And I say that because believe it or not, this is not even the first time we've seen this exact kind of magic inside of the Pixar verse. Because in case you missed it, there is this whole other Pixar movie that has everything to do with a mother daughter relationship where the daughter has bright red hair and someone magically gets turned into a bear. This is a pretty original concept for a story. How has it happened twice? Well, as ever, nothing, at least according to us, is ever a coincidence. Also, I don't think I said it. Brave is the movie I'm talking about. Ironically though, in Brave, Merida's mother is really determined to get her married. Whereas in Turning Red, Ming is horrified at the thought of Mei Lin entering the dating pool, or probably public pools for that matter. Either way though, the more that we started comparing these two stories, the more that started clicking right into place. In Brave, much like in Turning Red, we get an origin story of the character of Mordu. He, similar to Sun Yi, sought tremendous power and was gifted that in the form of a giant bear. The notable difference here is that Sun Yi was seeking this for the protection of her family and village, whereas Mordu was seeking it for power. Mordu's approach led to his own demise, whereas Sun Yi led to the continuation of her family for generations to come. Nonetheless, though, there are still plenty of similarities between the two situations. For example, both of the bears seem to have some kind of a darkness hiding within. More news you can spot if you look really carefully because it's literally everywhere. He's honestly basically in full dark mode all the time. Which is interesting because when we ultimately do see him die, we see the spirit of the man inside rise and he seems much more at peace, suggesting that somewhere along the way, the bear or primal darkness must have taken over. Also, again, if we want to go back to that, like how folklore is established over generations and generations and generations, when he does exit the bear's body, the spirit that we see looks a bit different than the one we see in Merida's mom's story. To me, this suggests that possibly the original Mordu, the human, was not 
quite as savage and power hungry as represented. Because on that same token, Merida's mother throughout the movie also has these moments where it seems like the darkness is winning out a little bit. This same thing happens in Turning Red, where we see Mei Lin even lose her cool on Tyler when he calls her a freak. Not to mention there's also Mei Lin's mother Ming as a giant Godzilla panda. But again, if we do back up to that scene with Mordu, where the spirit does rise out of the bear at the end, this is incredibly similar visually to what Mei Lin is experiencing with her red panda spirit, suggesting that these two are separate entities. Each bear situation also has a way of being undone where there are a lot of similarities, again, between these two stories. In Turning Red, as we mentioned, you stand inside of a circle and then sing with your heart's fire. This allows you to trap the spirit of the red panda inside of a talisman during the red moon. And in Brave, there is also a celestially based time limit on the magic. Merida must repair what has been broken before the second sun rises. Also, while the witch tells Merida these terms that you must repair what is broken in order to break the spell, look at where the spell is actually broken. It's inside of a stone circle where there's a group of people standing around all wishing for Merida's mother to return. Okay, fine. We don't actually know that that is what they're thinking and they're not singing. But if you think for one second that Merida doesn't have enough heart's fire to do this entirely on her own, then you need to go back and watch the movie. And now you might be wondering if it is in fact the same, shouldn't Merida's mother also have some kind of piece of jewelry that is responsible for containing the bear spirit? Well, interestingly, Merida does pay for the spell in the first place with a pendant that is incredibly similar to Ming's. And we also see that Mordu also paid the witch with a ring when he asked for his spell. But either way, no, that's not the case. There is no way for Merida's mother to turn back into the bear. Because even though there are a ton of similarities between these two situations, there are also several key differences between these two spells. They are not and do not function exactly the same. I mean, right out of the gate, for one, one spell turns you into a giant black bear, while the other turns you into a giant red panda. The panda spell seems containable outside of your body via the ritual and it can even be performed several times if needed. The black bear spell, on the other hand, has a much greater sense of permanence. You have a limited window of time to get everything fixed before the cement sets. But after that, you're simply stuck as a bear. And even before that, you couldn't change back and forth freely. The point is, surprisingly, this bear to human magic already exists inside of the Pixar verse. And thus far, it is the main kind of magic that we've seen on Earth. So the next question is, if Boo, who I will remind you inside of the Pixar theory is the witch, was responsible for the events of Brave and the gods themselves weren't responsible for Sun Yi, then who was? Was it the witch again? Honestly, quite probably. For one, we already know that the witch is capable of some form of time travel through the doors in the same way that the monsters are able to in Monsters, Inc. And we even see her use her own door to transform the room inside on several different occasions. Suffice it to say, Boo figured out door tech or magic or both, or neither. Either way, the point is again, that the main reason that Boo is traveling through time, according to the Pixar theory, is so that a memory of Sully always exists so that he never has to experience second death. Which, in case you're wondering, is the huge piece of the puzzle that was given to us by Coco. There's a full video by clicking the card. The idea here is that in order to create a permanent memory, you'd have to be able to travel back into the past and remember something from the future. And from there, you have to be able to set into motion a set of events that always ensure that you ultimately experience that memory again. So you basically can come back in time and recreate the events and you see what I mean. It's a big time, no, that's a circle. This makes the relationship between two characters, Boo and Sully, literally the crux of the entire Pixar theory. He appears to her as a little girl and then promptly disappears, never to be seen again. Well, almost. Kitty! From there, she spends her entire life trying to figure out where he came from or how to find him. But how do you even start looking for a big bear monster that you met 
as a little kid, where do you even begin? Enter Turning Red, because as I'm sure you are aware, they are still talking about Pandapocalypse in 2002 in Toronto. This was obviously a fairly significant news event for the planet Earth, meaning everyone on Earth would have heard this story, including Boo, who would probably be very interested as to where a giant bear monster came from, especially because I don't even think she was that far away from where Pandapocalypse happened. Allow me to explain. According to the Pixar theory, the timeline that is happening on the other side of the doors in Monsters, Inc. is within the 1950s. This is based on the fact that many of the rooms that the monsters enter in Monsters, Inc. all feature posters for the original Disneyland which of course opened in the 1950s and Boo herself owns a Jessie doll, which would have come out in 1955. Meaning that by the time Turning Red arrives on the timeline, Boo herself would be in her mid to late 40s. Roughly say the age of someone who could be the parent of a teenager. Now, obviously Maylin is not her daughter because we meet her mom inside of the movie. However, May does have a very good friend of Asian descent who wears pink and purple flowers, just like Boo's door, Abby. On top of that, in Monsters, Inc., we can actually see a map of the world that shows us which part of the world the monsters are scaring in the day that Boo arrives. And guess what? Toronto is totally in that zone. So it's possible that Boo not only heard about Pandapocalypse, but that her daughter was actually directly involved with it. Like mother, like daughter, am I right? And it even continues to add up after that because after Pandapocalypse, Malin's family does not hide their involvement with it. They actually make a huge deal about it inside of their sanctuary. And don't you think that if anybody might have access to Malin's parents to ask as many questions about how this came to be, it would be her friend's parents. You see what I mean? Do you think it's any coincidence that the panda shrine is literally covered with wooden carvings of pandas and the witch's shop is literally covered with carvings of bears? Coincidence? I it's okay, I, I got it. I got it. Thank you. Calm down. The crazy thing about all of this though is that it means that Boo is once again part of another time loop. Not only does she learn about the bear magic in the present, but she can actually travel back in time to the start of the story to ensure that it happens again so that the future her will learn about it again. It is the same trick over and over again. How elegant is that? <laughs> On a less happy note though, as long as we're talking about it, it also means that Boo as an adult is not a fan of Four Town. And according to Abby, thinks their songs are stripper music. I mean, come on. But there you go, guys. That is how Turning Red fits into the Pixar theory. For my question of the day, what do you guys think? Is this a good explanation? Let us know in the towel section down below. Also, bonus question, would you go to a Four Town concert? I totally would. But guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you would like some more Pixar theory action from us, you can check out this video right here where we discuss how soul fits into the Pixar theory. Otherwise, until next time, bye.